The new iPhone 13 Pro is priced starting at one lakh nineteen thousand nine hundred rupees in India, while the iPhone 13 Pro Max is priced starting at one lakh twenty nine thousand nine hundred rupees. These prices go up to one lakh sixty nine thousand nine hundred and one lakh seventy nine thousand nine hundred rupees respectively. Now that's a whole lot of money, and it's also much more than the non-Pro iPhone 13 costs. So what exactly do these phones do better, and what do you get that you can't get with any of their Android competition? We're going to help you answer those questions to help you decide whether either of these phones is worth an upgrade. And we're also going to get into a couple of features that you might be interested in if you're an amateur filmmaker. Let's get started. If you've seen the iPhone 12 Pro series, you've pretty much seen the iPhone 13 Pros. The newer models have the exact same body shape, only with slightly larger camera modules. The Sierra blue finish looks light and bright in photos, but in real life, it's more of a muted blue-gray and looks quite sophisticated and fresh. The front and the back are completely flat and a stainless steel frame runs around the sides. This makes the larger iPhone 13 Pro Max slightly hard to grip. The power and volume buttons are on the right and left respectively on both phones and are placed within reach. The mute switch which is above the volume buttons is quite handy. There's sadly no fingerprint sensor, only Apple's unique 3D Face ID for biometric security, but this doesn't work if you're wearing a mask. Apple has decided to make the notch on all iPhone 13 models less wide, but it's also taller. This doesn't feel like much of an improvement. In fact, it's even more intrusive when watching full screen video. With the iPhone 13 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro Max, compared to the relatively more affordable iPhone 13 and iPhone 13 mini, you're paying for a more premium stainless steel frame, more powerful graphics, better rear cameras plus an additional telephoto camera and LiDAR scanner, and a better screen. Only the Pro models can record ProRes video, ProRaw stills, and portrait stills in night mode. All models have roughly the same core specifications, IP68 ratings, ceramic shield for display protection, and MagSafe wireless charging support. This SoC has two high performance cores running at up to 3.23 GHz, plus four more efficiency cores for simple tasks. The integrated GPU is interesting because for the first time, Apple is differentiating between its Pro and non-Pro iPhones with five and four GPU cores respectively. Screen size is one of the key differences between the iPhone 13 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro Max. You get to choose between 6.1 inches and 6.7 inches respectively. Both models have the same type of OLED panel which supports a 120Hz maximum refresh rate, DCI-P3 wide color gamut and 1000 nit brightness. That can go up to 1200 nits peak for HDR. Third party teardowns have confirmed that the iPhone 13 Pro has a 3095mAh battery while the iPhone 13 Pro Max's battery capacity is 4352mAh. These numbers are quite low compared to what we usually see in the Android world but Apple still claims competitive battery life thanks to its efficient SoC and display, plus software optimizations. Apple doesn't include a charger in the box with any of its iPhones anymore, but if you use a compatible 20 watt or better charger, the company says you should be able to get up to 50% in half an hour. You get iOS 15 out of the box and many of its features will be common across iPhones going back as far as the iPhone 6S. All the new iPhones let you use two eSIMs together and ditch a physical SIM. There's support for more 5G bands in India than on previous iPhones. Let's first talk about the 120Hz Pro Motion displays that Apple has finally brought to the iPhone 13 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro Max. This feature is on all the time, there's no choice. Apple says it has optimized its hardware and software so that the refresh rate dynamically changes based on what you're doing. Scrolling through a list will raise it, while an idle home screen can refresh much slower to save power. These are very crisp, bright displays. HDR videos in compatible apps really pop. The stereo speakers produce loud, spacious sound that works well for voices in movies and games. The A15 Bionic SoC is obviously no slouch, handling everything including heavy 3D games with ease. I never saw either phone struggle with any app or workload. I played Call of Duty Mobile and Asphalt 9 Legends, along with several more casual games such as Alto's Odyssey and Lara Croft Go. Both iPhone 13 Pro models handle these games beautifully, even at the highest possible visual quality settings. The iPhone 13 Pro Max justifies its weight with stellar battery life, nearly two full days with moderate use and still well over one day even with a lot of video streaming, gaming and camera usage. It lasted for 22 hours and 45 minutes in our HD video loop test. The more manageable iPhone 13 Pro also pushed through a full day with heavy use and might last up to a day and a half if you're frugal. It managed to run our HD video loop test for 14 hours 52 minutes which is about average. 
Unlike last year's models, the iPhone 13 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro Max have exactly the same cameras. All three rear cameras as well as the front one have 12 megapixel resolutions. First up is the primary wide-angle camera which has an f1.5 aperture, sensor shift stabilization and 7-element lens. Then there's a new ultra-wide camera with an f1.8 aperture which can now autofocus to also take macro shots. The telephoto camera can now do 3x optical zoom with OIS but it only has an f2.8 aperture. Apple also throws in a LiDAR sensor on the Pro models which has some applications for augmented reality apps and also allows for portrait shots in night mode. The iPhone 13 Pro siblings will soon be able to shoot ProRes video following an iOS update. This format is said to allow for improved quality and an end-to-end -end professional level video production workflow. Cinematic mode applies a portrait-like depth effect to video backgrounds and automatically switches focus between subjects based on who's looking at the camera and who's speaking. It can also react to subjects entering or leaving frames or simply turning their heads. When I tried it on non-human subjects, it seemed to work fine. However, it needs good light and didn't always work after dark. You can even change focus points or disable the effect entirely after shooting a video. This was fun to play with, but it isn't something I'd want to use for everyday videos that I'd take of places and events. Not every subject needs depth of field and not every scene benefits from dramatic focus shifts. Photographic styles let you impose your own preferences over the iPhone's automatic decisions regarding metering and color tone. You can set levels for tone and warmth which will be applied to all photos you take. There are four preset combinations and you can fine-tune them. The differences they make are subtle but noticeable. As for photo quality, the new iPhone 13 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro Max can definitely take some incredible shots. There's no perceivable difference in quality between the two models. The primary wide-angle camera will not let you down in any situation. In daylight, detail is crisp and colors are vibrant without being oversaturated. Exposures are handled well and HDR worked subtly. You do lose a little quality with the ultra-wide-angle camera, especially towards the edges of frames. The difference isn't huge, especially in terms of exposure and color balance. There's no separate macro mode or toggle. As soon as you move either phone close to a subject, the app will automatically switch over to the ultra-wide camera, and this works even in video mode. You can usually see this happen in the viewfinder, but there's no indicator of the optimal distance from your subject. I needed to take several shots varying my position each time to have a decent chance of finding one crisp result. The telephoto camera goes up to 3x optical zoom now and digital zoom can go up to 15x. At 3x, daytime shots are crisp enough to be useful. It also works with night mode to make up for the f2.8 aperture. The larger primary camera sensor, improved A15 Bionic SoC and night mode all work together to allow these phones to capture sharp, vibrant images even at night. The ultra-wide and telephoto cameras aren't quite at the same level, but they're still exceptionally good. Video shot on all three cameras in the daytime or at night looks vibrant. Objects in motion look smooth and there isn't too much jitter or shimmer if you record with the main camera while walking. The ultra-wide camera can't quite deliver at the same level in terms of definition in low light, but video is no less bright. I did notice a bit of light flaring when shooting with the telephoto camera at night. The front cameras on the iPhone 13 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro Max are perfectly serviceable but nothing special for this price level. They deliver crisp shots in the daytime and acceptable detail at night. That said, the superior camera sensors of the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max along with Pro RAW and ProRes support, telephoto and macro capabilities, and their LiDAR scanners could make them seem like great value for content creators. You can get a high refresh rate display, IP rating, macro and telephoto cameras, and plenty of other features on far less expensive Android phones. Alternatively, Samsung's flashier Galaxy Z Fold 3 costs about the same as the iPhone 13 Pro Max and will feel much more futuristic. The main reasons to choose either the iPhone 13 Pro or the iPhone 13 Pro Max are their 120Hz screens and improved camera hardware. Now you might not find that there's much reason to upgrade if you already have an iPhone 11 or 12 Pro, but for anything older than that, the change will be significant. Of course, if you only want the best of the best, this is the default iPhone series to choose anyway. So that was our review of the new iPhone 13 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro Max. Thanks for watching and of course for more reviews like this do visit us at catch360.com.